Good afternoon, Andoni. Afternoon. We'll start with the breaking news, the positive news that Luis Sinistera has joined permanently from Leeds, obviously initially on loan, but the option has been triggered for 20 million. How pleasing is it to get a player of his quality confirmed as a permanent transfer at the club? I think it's good news, obviously, no, because uh, always when you you make a signing, and there is uh, some uncertainty, you know, because uh, you sometimes know the footballer, you don't know the person, and uh, you don't know how he's going to adapt. But in this case, I think he has been adapting very well. He has per been performing uh, really well, and I think uh, when you make uh, a signing with with uh, knowing much more about about a player like like we know with with Luis now i think it's uh, it's 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 good for the team yeah you've you've touched upon it there he's obviously been a, an important player for you this season but he feels like he's becoming a better player week in week out now how much better can he get how many more levels are there to his game I think he has been really good. I mean, it's, he has had. I think uh, it was not easy for me to give him, the, especially the first start. I remember because the, also the, we had some some wingers uh, playing really well, and now it's uh, it continues with the same fight. No, it's a position we've talked a lot about the wingers' positions, but he's he's doing really well. He's uh, doing his offensive stuff that we know he has, but also I think he's. Improving a lot in 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 the in the effort he's putting out of possession and he's he's becoming I think a more complete player. On deadline day, you signed Enes Unal from Hatafe, a player that initially couldn't come over to the country because of his visa. That's now been sorted out. He's obviously been training with his new teammates. Is he available to play? And what have you seen in the the training sessions that you've worked with him about his quality and and what he'll bring to this squad? Yeah, I think uh, for sure have been uh, difficult days for him because he was uh, looking forward to come here and start training with the with the team. But he has been uh, training with us last two three days, and uh, I think um, he's doing well. He will be part of the squad and he's ready to to help the team straight away. Obviously, we'll have like uh, with Romain, we'll have to spend some time now with the. Uh, with the info, with the things we want from from each player, but I think he also he speaks uh, two three languages, so I think it's, it has been really really easy for for him, and uh, I hope uh, that this process of the adaptation was is 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 quite fast and goes well. Could we just get an injury update on on a few players ahead of your trip to Fulham? I know there's been a couple of doubts, a couple of injuries in your last game against Nottingham Forest. Can you just take us through the players that you have concerns over and those that will be definitely unavailable? Yeah, I think I will give you all. I think we are uh, out with uh, with uh, Max Aaron, James Hill, Ryan Fredericks and Tyler Adams. No, that's it. I think that's it. Yeah. Ryan Christie, the rest okay. are available. Yeah. The Everyone all, else is okay. Everyone else is ready to to play. Obviously, the last time you won a Premier League game, funnily enough, was against Fulham on Boxing Day. Um, it doesn't seem like it's been that long since you, you won a match in the league. How different are you as a side and how different are Fulham as a side compared to that last meeting where you won 3-0? It's, it's strange because we played uh, not so long ago against them no, and we haven't changed a lot. Both teams, I think the way we play is pretty similar, pretty consistent uh, game, to, game to game and uh, I think they are a very good team. They are especially on the ball, they have... Uh, they take very good positions. They have players with a lot of quality, mm, and uh, I think we we have to defend really, really well. Otherwise, if you are not aggressive enough, if you don't win duels, uh, they have been really good, especially some games where they start taking the the ball and and feeling confident. Uh, you can suffer a lot in in their stadium, especially. But we know also that uh, if we are good and we we are in our level, we we can be dangerous for for them, like we were last game we we played against them. How much will Armando Broja change the dynamic of of their attack? Should he start? He's obviously a player with good experience, hasn't played a lot at Chelsea, but he wants to prove that he is more than capable of playing for Chelsea and at the very highest level. Were you expecting a a significant input from him? Yeah, he's a top-level player. This is no doubt. He has the 
at the level. He's a very good number nine. He can do a lot of things from the number nine position because he's good uh, inside the box. He's also quite a fast player for, for his size and quite dynamic. And I'm sure he, he will want to show everyone, score goals and do a good second half of the season. We hope he's not against us. We can, uh, we can mark him as, as good as possible, but undoubtedly uh, he will give them uh, much more offensive power, yeah, I think so. And just two quick final points for me. There's been a lot of talk about these blue cards, sin bins, and you know those being issued by the referee for cynical fouls and dissent, and a player would then have to, to go off the pitch for 10 minutes if they received a blue card. I know, of course, this is very early on in, its, uh, in the process of exploring whether this potentially could be an option to, to add to football. What's your thoughts on this and whether it would be a good or a bad thing? Uh, I don't know if the right now uh, we need new things, no? because I think it's pretty clear the yellow card, red card is, a, is an innovation. I think they should try it in other levels, ha, see how it, how it works. For me, the first thinking when they told me or when I learned about this was that if you play 10 minutes with 10, you will try to play as less as possible. Because uh, at the end, you you know that in 10 minutes you are recovering one player. So I think the the ball in play in these 10 minutes will, will be really, really low. Because even if you lose time or you have some medical attention and they put time later, OK, but it, later we are 11. So I think I'm not sure it's going to go for, for a better um, entertainment. I'm not, I'm not sure, no, I don't see it. And just finally for me, I know you're a big NFL fan. I know you've spoken about it publicly as well. Chiefs against the 49ers this weekend, I'm, I'm guessing you'll be watching and, and just that, that love of the game, which stems from you being in New York in 2015, 16. Can you just give us an insight into your thought process ahead of the Super Bowl? And no, I'm not a fan from neither of the teams. Uh, I'm not been thinking at all in the in the game. I have enough with Fulham and what the game we have. I suppose that uh, after the game uh, on Sunday, after watching also the the other the other games, I suppose I will be watching. Yeah. Thank you. There you go. The the game against Fulham here. Lewis Sinisteri, it, it was probably his best moment in a former shirt so far. That sort of goal, how often do you hope to see that from him? Or is it a once in a season wonder goal? I don't, I don't know. I hope he scores a lot of these ones, but normally they are not easy to score. They are not easy to score, but I know, we know that he has the, the quality and the level to make this kind of plays. Uh, but uh, he also knows he has to do a lot more things, you know, for the team, and we demand a lot more things from the from the wingers. And I think he's he's giving us every day. He's giving us more and becoming a more complete uh, uh, winger. And that that phrase, becoming a more complete winger. How excited are you about how much potential he has? Uh, I think he's a, a, a player that he has shown before in, in Feyenoord, in Leeds, especially that uh, whenever he has had a good run of games and has had a good uh, physical condition with us, he hasn't had, I think, any physical uh, issue. He has been available, I think, all the trainings, all the games, and I think it gives him a lot of confidence because he has the technical ability and he has the attributes to, to be dangerous uh, up front for us. Yeah. And the timing of the deal, making it permanent, was it just because he was so upset to have a Premier League goal taken away from him by that ruthless Justin Cliver? <laughs> no, I think I don't think so. It's, it's good that he's also helping us a lot in offensive set pieces. Even if he's not tall, he's uh, much more dangerous there than it looks. And it's good he provides this kind of, of, of uh, things to the team. I think the timing is because uh, I think the club had better conditions than the one that uh, previously were agreed and they took the chance and they decided to sign him. I, I think that's the, the main reasons. Um, as far as Bournemouth on the road, I think you've already, you've very nearly matched how many away wins of last season and you've already scored in more away games in the Premier League than, than last season. 
what what is the key to performing away from home? Yeah, there are two ways of looking at it. I think we have, uh, if I'm not wrong, 14 points away, 13 at home. It's not normally you have more at home. You know, it's uh, we are doing I think quite well away. We are playing well. We are having chances. We are scoring goals. Probably we are not as as good. Probably not for sure. We are not as good at home. And uh, I think uh, we don't change a lot. If we play at home, we play away. The way we go for the games is pretty similar. We we will try to go there and win the game. If we cannot, they are very good. We will try to get a point. But it's not like we we play differently away or we wait more and then we counter or no. We try to control the game. Sometimes we are not able and we have to do it uh, without the ball. Here, I think the 3-0 against them, they had more the ball than us because normally they are very good in possession, very, very good. It's difficult to 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 stay a lot of time on the ball against them. And we, we have to know this when we play them. And we have to know that we, even if we are not on the ball, we have to suffer, we have to stay together, and we will have our chances, our momentum. But it's not easy against this kind of opposition. No, I think they are uh, one... It's, it's difficult in the Premier to say one of the best teams on the ball. No, but they are really good. Is it difficult to convince players you can have exactly the same approach away from home? Is there a natural sort of reticence, reluctance? Why is it so no, difficult normally? No, I think we, we do it naturally. No, the, 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 the messages we send, I think they are pretty similar. Obviously, we prefer to play at home because we have the, the supporters behind. But uh, even if in our away games we have a lot of uh, support and uh, I think we are, we are doing really well, yes, away, yeah.